decentralization can really can solve some problem that will centralization how centralization they help cue regulation right they must be followed by the government by the policies but for the decentralization you don't worry about that no because you have your private key Hey folks, Flo here with Blockchain North, interview number 175. I'm just kidding, but we've done a lot of interviews here at Futurist. This is the last day. I'm here with Ben Zhu, who's with Stratos Network from Montreal, where I live as well. Uh, ben, why don't you first introduce yourself in 30 seconds or less? Yeah, thank you. My name is Ben Zhu. I'm located in Montreal. We have the team in Montreal and uh, Toronto. And the Strato team was started at 2021. We had three years of very hard work. Until you know, our network is big. We have more than nine, around 900 nodes across more than 20 countries. We can provide huge storage for business and the users. And now we also work in the decentralized database right now. Okay. Yeah. And an AI, I understand. Yeah. We provide a decentralized database in the future, but that one also could be using as an AI database. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the state of crypto infrastructure in the world right now? Like what, what level of infrastructure do we have? What uh, types of infrastructure do we have? And maybe what are the needs for further infrastructure going in the future? Yeah, right now the, the, the infrastructure for the IT, for the technology mostly is what provided by, by, by the big company like yes. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, right? It's a centralized. But when we talk about decentralization, we build something concrete, but the basement is, you know, foundation is centralized. It is going to be a little bit tricky, right? Mm -hmm. if sometimes if they are shut down, they have issues, they will affect the decentralization, decent affect the blockchain, affect some, uh, some node. But that's why we feel, okay, the decentralization, we need very uh, stable, decentralized infrastructure to feed all to the place. Well, Google, AWS, or either. And that's what we do. So we think if we really want to build a decentralized cloud, we need at least three different components. Storage, computing, and database. Then we use all any developer community we want to uh, implement with CATP, like one is, that social fight, game fight, we can use the decentralized infrastructure instead of the centralized that Congo I made up. And then now we go. And we've seen a number of examples uh, more recently in Canada. Rogers was shut down, I think, for like 36 hours yeah. about a year ago. And uh, millions of users had no access to any like phoning or, or, yeah. or, or any uh, 5G uh, connectivity. Uh, we've also seen a lot of, uh, of course, an increase of cyber attacks. Yep. Uh, in my country of France, we've seen hospitals that have been attacked and completely out of IT infrastructure, which you can imagine for a hospital is a huge problem. Uh, is that is that basically all about eliminating the single point of failure? Is that why we need to decentralize our IT infrastructure? Yeah, that's one. Yeah, because there's a centralized system. There, one small script that can you know can make the huge problem for the centralization. But in our side. All our node, all our server actually is not in one data center. It's across a lot of small data center, even some of them at home. We have some miners, they just join our network in their database, oh, sorry, in their basements. Yeah. So the main, oh, maybe some server had an issue, don't worry. And we have the other, the other node, the other totally separate node that can help out. So in this case, decentralization can really can solve some problem that will centralization help. That's one thing. The other thing is centralization, they help huge regulation, right? They must be followed by the government, by the policies, so, and the very strong censorship. But for the decentralization, you don't worry about that, and you don't worry about, okay, there's someone, they block you because of any reason, or someone, they will just believe you, who are complying you. It's pocket and block. Or the Bitcoin, everyone knows in the Bitcoin, if you've got the way of a Bitcoin, you may only have one or you have very little. You don't worry about the other guy, they have many Bitcoin, they can find you or they can steal from your account. No, because you have your private key. 
So for the decentralization, when we use the cloud, when we use our stuff, we use our account and then you never worry about the, the YouTube will delete you. Yeah. Remove your account. Okay, you're using us. You, as long as you have your private key, you're always proof you are the owner. With no anyone that have availability you to shut down your account, delete your content, or remove you. You always keep your company. Mm. That's the benefit that decentralization can. And so the other uh, sort of, I guess, separate industry that uh, you are able to service is AI. Now, can you explain why we need decentralization and AI in, in simple terms? Yeah, yeah. AI is important. Not actually, AI is algorithm. A lot of people, uh, smart people, they implement the algorithm. But more important is fuel. Like a car, you want to drive a car faster, you need fuel. Good fuel. Yeah. But AI, you already have algorithm, but you need Good quality of the data. Yeah. Where the data coming from? They come from the internet. They come from everywhere. But if the AI wants to see more smart, they need to gather data with real data. The data was generated by a human being. Okay, that thing is very serious, the Web3 concept. Okay, if you want AI working for the people, you really need all the people to contribute that data. Okay, that's data coming from everywhere. So, for the decentralization of AI, the people contribute the data from Africa, uh, North America, Europe. But they will never know where the this machine, GPU machine, they could locate everywhere. Right. So that will cause the latency. They will cause very low performance. Gather the data everywhere and send it back to the data everywhere of the GPU. Yeah. The straddle is how very unique design. It doesn't matter where the people come from. The data come from Africa, Europe. And when upload the straddle, straddle will balance all the data. They will keep man, they will keep at least the five copies across the world. If you are you are in the US, the data from Europe, they upload from Europe, but they will have at least the one copy in US. When you access that data, you don't need to travel to your uh, Europe. It directly can get it from US. So in this case, we really can improve the performance to train the data. We also can improve the transportation of the data. So that's why we're not more than 30, I think in more than 30 AI project is covered with that. Yeah, we deal with some very solid stories. We also can help them to improve their training performance or not. What do you see as the sort of uh, the next frontier for decentralized infrastructure in the world? I mean, you're so involved in this space and you must spend so much time, you know, uh, analyzing trends and, and, and consumer behavior, whether it's uh, B2C or B2B. What do you see as, as the future? What, what revolution maybe do you see that others don't see yet? Yeah, I think in the future, maybe centralized like Google, AWS, they will continue work. But at the meanwhile, Web3 or decentralized infrastructure, we are with the other big compactor. People can choose. For example, the, the centralized business, probably they will choose Google and AWS. Tech. But for the people, they want to have a three, they don't want KYC, or they want more solid, no censorship, or, or give them more to prove their ownership stuff. So you kind of see two parallel economies. Almost. Don't you see a, a, a point where those big Web2 giants that you mentioned, like Google or Amazon, uh, will uh, will actually absorb or, or sort of... One of my previous interviews said that, you know, they could be buying blockchains even. They could be buying a Solana, for example, or an Arbitrum. Or, uh, you, don't, you don't see integration in the near term? I think actually we often talk to Google and AWS because Google and AWS they also kind of our partners they give us grant. We want to we want to see we can grow. Okay, with them because they said okay, you are decentralized the infrastructure, but if you let it increase your node and maybe in Africa or somewhere you you don't have physical server there, we can help. Okay, actually they very have their own in mind to help us to grow. But the thing is, right now, we're still kind of small. Web3, the industry is still very small. I'm no, I, yeah. but in the near future, I think when we get in figure, 
probably they cannot find us like the Bitcoin or uh, you know, U.S. government. They cannot find the Bitcoin. They already know that. That's why they join the Bitcoin. Yeah. And in the future, probably the big company, they will join the web trade industry not to kill you, Matt. Not to kill you, Matt. Wow, that's yeah. super interesting. Uh, any final message? Where, where can people engage with Stratos? Are you an active uh, social media user yourself? Is there content that they can sort of, you know, learn about what you do, but more broadly about digital infrastructure? Yeah, actually, we already have all the information on our website, the strato.org. Okay. Yeah, they can find... Do you have a blog the there as well or yeah, some yeah, content? Yeah, we, have, uh, we have content that you have also have linked to our Twitter. But at the meanwhile, I want to tell all the users, actually, and the user consumer, there are two ways you can join our network. One, you can contribute your computer okay. at home. Similar to mining. Yeah, to mine. To provide your computer, to join the network, to provide a service to third parties. That's one. Then you get a reward. The second one, we will launch the decentralized job box ourselves. Okay. And actually, you can use the Google Drive, uh, the other option, you can use Stratos Drive. Okay. And we don't ask you for the email, you don't need your phone numbers. Yeah. You can use it. No one knows. And all the content on your drive is always belong to you. Right. So always own the content. Is it also more cost effective? Yeah. The other thing interesting is this. You, you have your data. Never, no one can steal the data. No one can delete the data. Meanwhile, but you can quit the sharing. You can send friends. And the friends can get your link and download the you know, content. And get some kind of a referral maybe or... Yeah, something like that for it. It's very easy. And if you already have some content, it's a very interesting. Your content generates the amount of traffic. You even can get a reward. Just for reward because you generate the traffic. Something like TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, you can make money if your content is very good. Who doesn't want to make money? On Harvey's QOL or YouTube where you can try us. Sounds great. Thank you very much, Ben. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you. Take care.